This is Kill Switch, and I'm interviewing Landon, the creator of Duck Game. There is no way I'm going to try and pronounce your last name. I'll <laughs> let you take care of that. Um, if you could introduce yourself. Uh, I'm uh, Landon Podbilski is the pronunciation for it. Uh, yeah, I'm the creator of Duck Game. Uh, it's, uh, on Ouya, it's a multiplayer deathmatch shooter thing with like one-shot kills, ultra-fast gameplay. Uh, it's my first big thing. Before that, I mainly did the music for Super Puzzle Platformer. Okay, and the first question that I usually ask of everybody is what were some of your favorite games growing up and what may have influenced, you know, what you're creating now? Um, main influence growing up, I guess, was uh, playing on the Sega Genesis when I was a kid. Uh, I played a, a lot of, uh, like, Sonic and the Terminator and stuff like that. And the main thing for me was always the uh, the connection between like the music and the gameplay, uh, because I found that those were games like including that and uh, Outrun twenty nineteen as well. Uh, they had really good music and it complemented the gameplay well. So my main inspiration is definitely like heavy pixel based, gameplay based, and uh, chip music. Yeah, the music. That was also one of my favorite things about Genesis era. Um, we have a, well, admin, I was about to say moderator, uh, Riot Inspector, who posts um, links to YouTube videos almost two, three times a day, just different songs from that era, from different theme music and all that. Sit there clicking. I end up listening to them like almost all day. Uh, I would do that too. <laughs> So I get carried away with that kind of stuff. And there's there's an endless amount of it. You, you never run out of stuff to listen to on there. Yeah, it's, yeah, like when you first posted the sample of what you were doing for the game. I was playing it over and over. And then, un unfortunately, you changed it. I mean, it's still good, just I like the original. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if anybody was going to notice, because uh, it, it's weird. I was uh, I was running through the music in, like, slow motion, and it gets kind of sort of a lower pitch. And that particular song, uh, I really liked the uh, the extra bass given by like the lower guitars. So I, I sort of moved it down a bit. And yeah, I changed like the backing brass a whole lot. Uh, maybe for the better, maybe for the worse. Like I think I liked it better when it was done. But then yeah, I still go back to the old ones sometimes, and I think you know like this is this is pretty different. <laughs> yeah, and I can see part of your setup back there is everything done by you uh yep yeah i did uh, absolutely everything on the game uh most of the stuff uh that i have is mostly like i don't use it for composing like i have a keyboard to the right of me here uh which mm -hmm. i use just for coming up with melodies and stuff like that but i won't play anything live uh -huh. like uh I i've been getting better and better at playing live music i can improvise on the piano but i'm not comfortable enough with my skill yet to be able to be like, you know, come up with a riff, play it in the song, record it, and then have that in the final cut. Uh, okay, because the music that you have in the game is definitely something that interests a lot of people, but as you know, we have to figure out why ducks. <laughs> well, uh, not a whole lot of story to that. Uh, mostly, uh, I've always liked ducks. It's like my favorite animal since I was a kid. Uh, I guess there's a bit of a story, because when I was a kid, I decided uh, I wanted to make a platformer game similar to James Pond 3, which was a uh, a platformer for the Sega Genesis that allowed you to run on the roof, like 360, sort of like Sonic, but when you're upside down, you don't fall off, you stay on the roof. I wanted to make hmm. something like that, and I made it a duck, because I needed an animal, like James Pond, some sort of like frog fish thing, so I needed something like that. Uh, I made that when I was a kid. I never ended up finishing it. And then I wanted to start it again. So I built a new engine. I spent a whole bunch of time figuring out the platforming. And uh, one time my buddy came over from work and uh, he suggested that I added guns to the game because we were really into like uh, platform and deathmatch games at the time. Like there was this really old one uh, for Windows like 98 or 95. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. But, uh, yeah, so I added guns, and I made it one-shot kill at the time because uh, I was inspired by Hotline Miami, which I'd been playing at the time, and I thought the one-shot kill dynamic in that made for, like, really interesting and original frantic gameplay. Mm -hmm. 
And the duck kind of just came over because since I was making it when I was a kid, I figured, you know, I might as well keep it a duck. I still like ducks and I drew a duck that I was happy with. So, okay. So no, uh, Howard the duck or anything like that has an influence. <laughs> uh, there was actually, uh, there was a DOS game called Charlie the duck, which might have a bit of influence. It was made by uh, a guy as sort of like a programming demo, I would say. It was a really simple Mario-style platformer using a Mario engine he created. But you'd play as a little duck, and it would walk around, and it looked kind of similar, and it would float and do cute duck things. So I always liked that game. Right. Uh, not Howard the Duck, though. I actually know very little about him. I should probably look, like <laughs> do more research because I'm very interested in that. Like, this looks all crazy. <laughs> Um, it was, I don't want to insult the people who made the movie, but it wasn't the best movie. It's not that great. No, uh, it's not. It's one of those, um, you know, one of those bad movies that you just have to keep watching. You, you have to see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, one of those. So, sort of like, watch it once if you've got time, but you won't watch it again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because... I don't think I've watched it since whenever that was out. Jeez, that's got to be the late 80s. Yeah, this is pretty old now. I always just saw, like, clips of it and thought, this looks ridiculous. Well, that's one way of describing it. Because <laughs> um, it's just a question that keeps coming up. But another question that, that this is an, uh, well, it's not really a question, more of a statement. There are some people who actually thought that you looked like your avatar yeah uh like uh you mean the uh the guy doing welding yes <laughs> you know i saw your picture somewhere before i don't remember where it was but there are members of the forum who thought maybe you looked like your avatar no that that would be amazing uh no that is uh that is craig from ripping friends uh, which is a show by uh, John Crickfalusi, who I'm a big fan of, uh, that he made for Cartoon Network a while back. I believe it was Cartoon Network. But yeah, he's my favorite character from it. And they're all like constantly doing super manly things in it. And I figured that was a good shot because he's like working on something and he looks like he's uh, getting stuff done. Well, that's true. Does look like he's getting something done. And that's why everyone's like, he must always be working. That must represent him. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to disappoint not looking like that, though, with the cape and the, the crazy pointy hair. The beard instead of the stubble. <laughs> yeah, that's one, that's one crazy looking picture. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, as you know, I mean, this past week, it's been all Landon, all duck game, and you can't get away from it. I've actually been, as you know, I do a lot of retweets and all that for the Ouya stuff. I've had people actually unfollow me because of how much Duck Game stuff there was. And you're, oh, I mean, right now, you're pretty much the Ouya superstar. <laughs> well, thank you. That's, uh, I, I do feel like, uh, like Duck Game's getting a, a lot of really good support and, uh, Everybody's loving it, and the forum, like, you guys have just been awesome. Uh, I can't believe the community behind Uya that is there, just, like, li like even just the feedback speed that I got from you guys, like, uh, the big bugs, uh, any problems with the game, like, I knew right away from you guys and was able to fix them. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just been, like, release has been I incredible. It's The reception's been like nothing else I've ever experienced. Well, you kind of just eliminated, like, three questions right there. <laughs> all right. Because uh, um, everyone was curious on, you know, all the bugs, how you felt about what's going on in the community, and obviously it's been mostly positive. There has been a few issues that uh, that do, do get me stressed just because, like, I'm working to fix them. And, you know, with any development process, a bug comes up, and you'll get all worried about it, and you'll stress out until it's gone, right? Like, uh, there's a big one right now, which is that uh, the Spanish language, possibly other languages as well, uh, but I know Spanish for sure, 
uh, when you when your console set to Spanish, you'll start the games, and some yeah. of the levels, the ducks will spawn below the level or above the level, or the collision will be completely wrong, and you won't even be able to play the game. Hmm. And it's due to an internationalization error with my float parsing. So things like that have stressed me out because, like, uh, I've got it fixed, but I can only get a patch out so quick. And everybody who's suffering from that problem, they have to wait, which is awful. And, uh, like, I've already seen uh, a single refund come through for the game, which, uh, which really, like, makes me sad. Because I imagine that that refund has come from somebody who is having problems that made the game unplayable, like the Spanish bug. Well... Hopefully you don't run into too many more of those because pretty much everyone else who's talked about the game has there I haven't heard anything negative yet. All the negative has been has been bugs for me, which is that's uh that's unheard of, but like uh because even uh with releases like uh, I worked uh, at Kerberos on Sword of the Stars two, which was a rough release. Uh I worked on a few mobile games at Tinyco, which wasn't very fun. And I worked on Super Puzzle Platformer, which is probably the best thing I've worked on. And all of those things, right? You get lots of positive, lots of positive, and then there's always at least one thing, like one review that's negative. And, you know, whether or not you agree with it, you'll read it, and you'll think about it, and you'll think, you know, well, some of these are valid points, and, and it'll, it'll get you down, right? But, you know, that's what these things are for. And I feel like I've been lucky so far to not have gotten any negative feedback about the game beyond bugs and uh, flow type stuff. Oh, that's good, but there is one issue which you know of, which is Ouya got rid of the free to try. Yes. And you came out without a demo, and we were wondering what's going to happen when that first big game actually comes out without the demo. See, I was very worried at the time because uh, when I heard that Ouya was going to go and drop the, uh, the free-to-play play model, uh, I liked it because it makes it more open for developers to do what they want. But also, I was worried because I knew that there would be people who, you know, they Ouya started with this and then they take it away. And people are going to be upset about that, right? They expect it to work away, and then that gets changed. And initially, I was—I really didn't want to make Duck Game without a demo, like uh, especially this close to the change. I didn't want to be that game that comes out without a demo and gets everyone all mad at it for uh, like. And, and you know, the people who have talked to me about me not having a demo have good points too. I mean you can't really know how the game works unless you try it. And uh, for something, you know, there's a lot of bad games out there, and without a demo, how can you know? You might just put down $10, the game could suck, and then your money's gone, right? That's true. And that's why I, I just ended up, I wanted to have a demo. Uh, I didn't have time before the game came out to get a demo I was happy with, because I don't like a demo to be thrown together. I like I want to make sure that I uh, pick the right weapons to include, the right levels. I test the demo. I make sure it's fun before it's out. Um, I've been doing that, actually, since release. That's been the main thing that I've been focusing on. Uh, and I do have the demo ready in the next build that's going out. So within the next week here, we should have a demo for Duck Game ready to go. Hmm. Okay, well... That should ease the concerns of those who want the demo. I mean, I'm part of the why can't we have a demo camp. Even, I mean, I am a developer too, but when Ouya started with it, it was one of the things that first drew me in. Because, you know, you go to PlayStation, Xbox, they didn't have that requirement. You could end up spending $50, $60 on crap. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, especially with games like, uh, I can see how some things, like some independent games, I could see how it would be really hard to make a demo for them. Because, mm -hmm. like, especially the more artsy ones, they're a single piece, right? They're all, they can't be cut apart in such a way that'll give you an idea of what to expect. But with a lot of games, and especially Duck Game, like, uh, it's, it's just a hundred things, right? And... 
it would be very easy for me to have something that would show people how the game works um, while not giving them everything yet and let them have fun with a limited version of the game. So, you know, I completely agree. If your game can have a demo and it's easy for you to make something fun without having to change the game entirely in a demo, then you should do it. And had Uya not changed, I probably would have got a demo together uh, for release and then changed it later to make it more like what I wanted it to be. Just because, yeah, yeah, the only reason I didn't have one on release again was uh, just, you know, it's a stressful release. Lots of, lots of trying to get everything in right at the end of the project. And then uh, the demo on top of that is, uh, is like another fork in the code, which can just lead to more trouble. So I wanted to avoid it until later. Oh, makes sense. And that's why some of us were trying to get things together to help you out so that people would have enough information. Because now you have four hours of streaming, uh, many reviews, all that. Just try to get it all together to help you out while you're trying to actually do the demo, which you did mention. Because um, obviously if you don't have a demo, at least you can see people playing it. They're having fun. I mean, people love the two streams that we got to see. And and. I should say thank you to you for uh, showing up for that first stream because I didn't even know if anyone invited you. That's why I sent <laughs> out the invitation to you. No, I, I appreciate the uh, the invitation. I, I love watching streams, and I'd I like to sit through any I can. Like, I mean, it's stressful for me because uh, the game could break while the stream's happening, right? And then I'll get all worried. But, you know, that's, that's being a developer. That's going to happen. And I would rather... I'd rather see the streams, and I have endless appreciation for the people running the streams. They do, they do more than anything to promote a game. Like they're they're amazing people who help immensely in the whole process. And I don't know what uh, what independent developers would do without them. Frankly, like I think they they really they're like the missing link that helps us get our game out there. Helps people see what we've made. See, that's, I'm hoping when it's my turn that it doesn't break. <laughs> that was, it seemed like it was your biggest concern that night. Just making sure nothing breaks so everyone get, walks away happy. Yeah, and you know, if it breaks there, you know, it could be something that I could fix in code in, in a minute. But I can't get the build out to the streamer after that. I, I just have to... Like, I have to hope that it doesn't break in such a way that it stops the stream altogether. Because then, you know, that's that's something where if I'd have known about it before, I could have fixed it, and that never would have happened. But then, if it breaks the stream... <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah, but, um... No, thankfully, everything went okay. I mean, you had two successful streams. You had... So many reviews were coming out. That's when I started losing those followers because I would retweet every review. I mean, some of us knew that we would need to help in any way just because of the whole demo thing. I mean, you had enough footage and everything I would, that even if I was against it, I would have been like, oh, there's enough info here that I don't need to see it. Yeah. but As, I would say, yeah. though, that my, my biggest regret... Other than the Spanish problem, which I'm not sure how I could have foreseen, like this, uh, it'll never happen again now that I know that C Sharp has these problems. But my biggest regret, uh, I would say, was uh, not having a demo. Just because, I mean, as a developer, right? Like, yeah, I need money to live, but more than anything, I want people to play my game. I want to know I, if my game's good, if I did a good job, right? And I want people to have fun with it if it can be done right like if you can have fun with my game i want as many people to have fun with it as possible like uh that's why i'm in this industry that's why i'm not working on games that i don't like that's why i'm not doing like uh like monetized games and things like that things like that is because i believe that like i have an idea what i think a good game is you know and i want all i care about in life is playing good games that other people have made and trying to make games that improve on things in games that I like that people can enjoy. And, you know, offering a demo 
lets people do that for free, and it doesn't take anything from me. So, I mean, pretty much feel the same way about demos. It, like, I would rather put out a demo, have people like it, and then buy it from that instead of just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Buyer's remorse. Yeah, right. yeah, no, buyer's remorse is just, like, nobody should have it. I think you should always, there's, uh, like, people worry, right? Some people play on buyer's remorse. Like, they'll they'll really crap and then, you know, sort of, like, sketchy advertise it in such a way that people will buy it and then be like, oh, well, I got to make sure I don't do that next time, right? And that's why I think systems like demos is, is something to prevent that, to make sure because if you pay money for something, you should know what you're paying money for. And no, you shouldn't have doubt. Uh, especially in a video game environment where you can test it before you buy it. Yeah, and that's, again, part of the whole thing with us trying to get as much info out there for you. So that you, you know, because let's say all that promotion is done and then people don't like the game. Then what do you do? So yeah, that's why we were there trying to help out, inviting you to the streams and all that too. And you guys were incredible. It's uh, I saw my Twitter, it, it just lit up for like three days, like I've never seen before. It's, <laughs> it was like uh, every time I'd go to it, there'd be just dozens and dozens of new notifications, and you guys promoting it, retweeting, sending messages around, and it was uh, unreal. And I thank you for it. Hey. It you make a good product, this community will get behind you. That's one thing I've seen over and over. And that's, that's an amazing thing. It makes it feel a lot less, uh, a lot less sort of cold and empty than releasing on other platforms is knowing that there's a dedicated group of people on this one who are willing to help you and go above and beyond to make sure that you get seen. And, you know, it, it makes me feel like, uh, like a part of like a family, right? And that's that's a pretty good feeling. Yeah, that's kind of how I look at it. As a moderator at the forum, it's kind of like a family. You come in, everyone says hi. You know, you talk. It's almost it's almost like you're coming home sometimes. One yeah. big dysfunctional family, but still a family. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of dysfunctional families, and they still get along. <laughs> well, for the most part, we do. There are times we want to kill each other, but the community <laughs> does stick together. Yeah, and it's that contrast that, you know, makes you, everyone sees everyone, and there's no hiding or staying back, and that's what I think makes it feel like a family on a forum, is that everyone's willing to speak their mind, and, you know, if, uh, if you can't take it, you'll go, otherwise you'll just keep arguing with everyone and having a good time. Hey, and that's, that's what I like about forums. Yeah, most forums are just fighting. I'm, I'm actually really surprised that the way this one isn't about fighting. <laughs> I haven't really seen any from what I've looked at so far. It's just been people uh, discussing, like, sort of in an orderly manner, things about games and, like, just in a positive whenever possible, it seems. People don't like to start things so much. Well... Okay, I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to, <laughs> you know, yeah. I assume it, there's exceptions. Yeah, there are, but for the most part, the developers are treated well, which I was shocked at because, you know, coming into it, when I first got into this, it was about the cause more than the development side, but then I saw that, you know, I can take my C-sharp, get my Unity, and put something out and actually have people giving me feedback, telling me, I don't like this. How about this? Yeah. I mean, I have like, I'd say 10 ideas on a list right now. None have names. <laughs> but I know I can go into the forum and say, hey, I need a name. Someone's going to throw one out there. They just did for my little space shooter game, which was, it was a contest game. It wasn't going to be released. Mm -hmm. But since the community jumped in to help out, going to do it. You know, they gave it a name. They're doing the voices. <laughs> awesome. That's and cool. You can't get that anywhere else. No, and it's especially, I mean, before, right? Uh, before you had places like forums that you could go, like, what would you do? You'd have to, 
you'd have to actually like get up, find some place to go where there were other people to talk with about game development. Like uh, the the uh, on Duck Game, actually, uh, I live with uh, with three people who are also independent developers. So I had people to play with and people to talk to, right? But when I don't have them around, there's nowhere else to go to get a second opinion or a second set of eyes on something, right? Other than a forum or some place on the internet full of people who want to help. Well, at least you hope they want to help. Yeah. <laughs> in their in their minds I think usually they think they think they're helping. Uh sometimes though, yeah. There's there's people who are really helpful and then there's the people who get excited about something you don't quite think is uh is as exciting as they are they think it is but you know i think everybody usually has a uh a good intention unless they're just trying to blow off some steam you know you know what that's a good way of putting it because now i'm thinking about the few the few who aren't happy with anything usually that's what it is blowing off steam i mean but pretty much the whole forum loves the Ouya, just want to see more things, like Duck Game and others. Because, unfortunately, you can, if you let everybody in, you're going to get small games or my first game and all types of things. That's why when games like yours come out, stands above the rest, and, you know, sometimes you're just wondering, why did this guy decide to develop for Ouya? And this guy's just dumping stuff on Ouya. And this guy wants to learn about it. It's all, it's all different types coming together instead of just, hey, let's all develop. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely everyone. And, you know, as much as, as, much as yeah, you get, like, uh, uh, someone's first game and things like that, you know, as a developer, I've always liked playing that kind of stuff anyway, right? Seeing, remembering what I made as my first game, seeing like you know how how did this person do on their first game and you know like being impressed and thinking like wow they had they had this and that i never would have had that for my first game and uh you know and usually you can tell you can tell on the storefront and uh that's a beautiful thing about demos especially on ouya is you're able to test these things so if somebody decides that they think their first game is worth some money well then you know you can play the demo to be sure because you, you know, you can never really trust someone's very first thing uh, unless you're able to try it. Because a lot of people, you get excited, right? You make something, it's running on Ouya, you get excited, so you'll release it on Ouya. And, you know, you might, you, you probably don't have the, uh, the experience yet to know whether or not other people are going to like it as much as you do. Because, like, when I was a kid, everything I made, I thought it was great. I thought everyone was going to love it. And... I look back at it now and, you know, there's there's not a whole lot of polish on that stuff. Mm. It's not for everyone. Yeah, well, no one's going to see my past stuff. <laughs> it's hidden somewhere. They won't ever know. <laughs> so. But um, since we're on the subject, why did you personally pick the Ouya instead of, you know, PlayStation or whatever? Well, uh, it all started... Um... I've always, uh, I think I liked the Ouya since we saw a video of Amazing Frog being played on it. And at that point, like that was just, uh, it had so much right about it and we needed to play it. So that's what ended up getting us to get one in the first place, getting us on board. Uh, then what really set it off was uh, at PAX, uh, PAX, uh, PAX West last year in October. Uh, Bob was walking around, Bob and Tim, they were walking around the, uh, the area and they came up to the super puzzle booth, which I was there with Andrew at the time. And they talked to us and they were asking, you know, like, uh, what would a, do you think you could put super puzzle to Ouya? Like, have you ever tried it? Have you considered? And, uh, I had actually before that point done a quick port of it. Uh, just to see how it worked, and they they helped me work out some issues with performance and things like that. Uh, I was never able to get it to a point where it could be on the system, just because I had a lot less knowledge about working in mono game on Ouya at that time. But uh, since I liked mono game so much, I was porting Duck Game, which I had originally made in Game Maker, 
I was porting it to mono uh, just to get it into a new engine that I was going to use for other things. And I knew Bob from PAX. Me and him had been talking on Skype. And so I tried running Duck Game on Ouya. And to my surprise, like compared to Super Puzzle, it ran perfectly right off the bat. I didn't have to do anything to make it work. Like It was very simple at that time. No backgrounds, uh, very few things going on. But it worked, and I sent it to Bob, and I said, you know, like, uh, this is what I'm working on right now. What do you think of it? And they played it, and he said he loved it, and that uh, he was wondering, you know, like, uh, are you going to make it for Ouya? Like, are you going to get it on here? And I said, you know, like, yeah, it's local multiplayer. I think Ouya is awesome for that. That's what it excels at. And uh, since it was already running on there, I got talking with him, and we worked something out in that he would help me finish development on the game because I was running out of money at the time. Uh, he gave me enough to pay rent, buy groceries and stuff like that until the game came out. And they helped me, they supported me with, uh, like Tim would help me with the programming problems to do with Ouya specific stuff, things like that. So really, uh, I guess they were just there from the beginning. Uh, they gave me a good offer in regards to making sure that Duck Game could get done which, as a developer, I don't think there's anything more important than actually finishing your game somehow, so... Yeah, that's true. And it also feels good having the game out uh, on a platform. Like, I felt like Duck Game was something that could be good, that could be a lot of fun. And I think it's really cool that I was able to release it on Ouya because, you know, like, there's not a whole lot of stuff coming out on it. Uh, compared to other platforms, people always go, uh, they look at the obvious, right? Oh, well, I want to go on PC or Xbox or something. Not so much Xbox anymore. But, uh, you know, and it, it feels good to be able to, it's almost like a, like when people see the game, they think it's awesome, but they don't want to get a new year for it. Like, I can understand that, but also it makes me feel good that I'm bringing awareness that, you know, the Uya has got good stuff on it, and it's still getting good stuff on it. So, you know, it's not going away. It's still here. And honestly, it was fun to develop for. So <laughs> I think uh, I think it's been a really good experience overall. Hmm. So you had, basically, you had help from them, help from the community. You had everybody on your side, basically. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, it was a really comfortable experience. Like, there was no... And the people, usually the people who are so violently against Ouya are just people looking to cause trouble. Like, uh, like you'll, you'll, you'll hear people, right, who are unsure about the system, but they won't be, like, there, there are the people who just troll Ouya, right? And those are the people that, that's the only negative influence is those people. And, you know, I don't, I don't respect their opinion for the most part because they don't express it, uh, like nicely yeah, that's something i'm very familiar with because i'm one of the people who tries to fight against that stuff i mean you've seen my twitter that accounts basically oh yeah everything i might yeah. as well work for them <laughs> i'm still waiting for that check bob if you're listening <laughs> um but uh duck game definitely unique by having the ducks i <laughs> Still strange, but uh, where did you come up with all the weapons, the hats, the all the extra stuff in there? Um, a lot of it actually uh, came through boredom during development. Like uh, I would make the game right. Originally, the game had uh, the industrial tile set, like ten levels. Um, it had pistols, shotguns, grenades. A bunch of straightforward basic stuff, right? And it was fun like that. It was already fun because the one-shot kill mechanic works really well for the quick rounds and leaves a lot of room for, like, easy-to-play, hard-to-master type stuff just with uh, moving around the levels. Um, but every time I was developing, I would... Uh, every now and then I would think of a cool weapon or I would get bored and I would sit down on my computer and I would think, you know, like... Uh, I'm getting pretty good at duck game the way it is right now. I know how to use all the weapons. You know, what what can I do to make something weirder happen? How can I make the game more interesting? 
so that I have to think more different ways while I'm playing it. So that's where the net gun came from. The net gun was the first weird weapon that I added, uh, which I figured uh, the very first weird thing in the game was like the disarms, where you could grab a crate, you can throw it at a duck, and their weapon will fly out of their hand. So you could use anything as a weapon, essentially. And uh, I thought, you know, it would be fun if a gun let you do that to the other ducks without having to have an object around, right? Like you have some way to manipulate the, their, uh, their character without uh, like picking up their controller, right? And so like there's something really frustrating about getting netted, having someone pick you up and do whatever they want with you until you get out of the net. And that began a lot of the inspiration for stuff like that. Like uh, the mind control ray is similar to that where you can mind control someone and run them around, do whatever you want with them. Uh, the conversion thing where you can make someone onto your team and then they have to choose, right? Like, what do you do when you're on somebody's team? Well, you can you can go suicide so that you're not going to contribute to them getting a point or you can try to take them out and take yourself out so that it's a draw and nobody gets it. Or you can help them if you think that they need the help, right? So basically, you just, any idea that came to your head, you put it in the game is what it sounds like. Mostly, yeah. Like, I would come up with something, I'd think about it. Uh, usually I'd write it down first. Um, and then I'm constantly thinking about these things. It, it, a lot of ideas I would think of, and uh, maybe they wouldn't work at first. And I'd end up sort of spinning them into a way that does work with the game. So pretty much, yeah, it was uh, anything that came to mind that I thought was different enough from the other things in the game already, and that would actually be fun to use. Like, I would say my least favorite weapon in the game right now is the firecracker weapon, like the little firecrackers that you can toss around. Okay. And that's just because uh, they're, they end up being sort of a random element. Like, there's not a whole lot of skill involved in using the firecrackers. Like, uh, it's hard to predict because you throw it and it blows up a certain amount of time after you throw it, which is enough time for anybody to get out of the way. So there's not really a trick to using the firecrackers, and I, I feel like there's a trick to using every other gun in the game. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, what would you say is your favorite gun, then? Favorite's tough. Um, it's, you know, I, I always come back to it. I think my favorite gun is probably actually just the net gun, because... Uh, of all the kills that I end up seeing in the game, you get the coolest, weirdest kills with the net gun. Just to do with, like, uh... Well, for one thing, it's, it combines well with other weapons. You can net someone, and it can get them killed by somebody else, so it can make them slide onto a mine, or somebody else can pick them up. Or even, like, I've seen a lot of times where somebody would jump in through the air, and they'll get netted in the air, and they'll fly down, and they'll crush somebody else while they're in the net and then you can run up and throw them off and it's like a double kill at the end of the level just from like timing the net gun just right and oh it's fun too because you can like uh, if you fly in the air if while you're flying you'll shoot up right so you can fly and shoot a net up and time it so that when somebody's coming across the net will come back down and hit them like from the sky without them even seeing it coming and stuff like that Oh. And no other weapon really allows you to sort of be so, like, fancy with your, uh, with your captures like that. So you may have just given people a new strategy that they can <laughs> use. Yeah, that's a, that's a hint, is that the, the, the net gun has a ton of stuff that you can do with it that people won't expect, which is what gives it a leg up on things like pistols and shotguns, right? And that those are very predictable weapons. The net gun can have a lot of weird things happening based on where you fire it. Especially when springs and stuff like that come into play, then, you know, you never know where it's going to go. Okay, and unfortunately, as you know, there are some of us who don't have the three friends living nearby and all that. So, uh, what are the plans on, you know, possible online play or anything else? Um, well, uh, single player is in the works right now. That is the first thing that I'm focusing on uh, after the demo, which uh, I'm not actually completely sure how I want single player to work yet. I have some ideas, 
I've tried writing bots. Bots are incredibly complicated for duck game though because the sheer amount of weapons and level designs require would require a lot of very specific AI programming, which I wouldn't have the time to do. So if I was going to have bots, it would probably be a very simplistic sort of uh, not very smart bot that would just use pistols or shotguns or something like that. And uh, I'm planning on doing a sort of uh, like a house survival mode where you can play one to four players co-op and uh, these really dumb AIs will sort of swarm the building. They'll climb up into the windows, come in through the roof, stuff like that. And there'll be something at the center that you need to protect. And uh, all the ducks will say be robots or something, drop gears that you can get to sort of uh, put throw into a machine to get better weapons out of it. And it's sort of a last as long as you can thing. Hmm. Okay. I'm planning on doing something like that and also a sort of challenge mode where it's just uh, a bunch of things set up that use the weapons in weird ways where you try to say... Um, like net things and make them hit things in a certain way in a certain period of time uh, as quick as you can. Like, uh, I don't know if you play time splitters, but sort of the same sort of like wacky challenge mode. I, if I did, I don't even remember right now. <laughs> they just had things like, uh, like one particular one that I think everyone who's played it would remember is, uh, in time splitters two, there's a challenge where you're just given a brick weapon and you can throw it. And there's windows all over the place, and you have to run around the level, and you have to throw a brick through every window as quickly as you can. And it ended up being super fun. So just weird stuff like that, where it's like, you know, in Time Splitters, you don't even do stuff like that, but you can find a brick in the game, so they decided to make a challenge for it that was fun. Hmm. Okay, and um, what about uh, the possibility of online play? Online is uh, also still planned for after the single player. The single player take about a month. Uh, and then the online, it's hard to say how long that'll take because I have experience doing online, but I don't have experience making a game that wasn't designed with online in mind online. Like Duck Game obviously would uh, work really well in an online situation, but the engine hasn't been designed with any online in mind. So... It'll be interesting to see, you know, it could be that I can come up with some way to make it work really easily, or it could be that I have to change everything to make it work. So we'll see what happens with that. So it'll be anywhere from two to three months uh, okay. before online, but it is planned. All right, because those are the main questions that are still hanging out there, because like me, I mean, I... I'll buy the game anyway, but I have to wait before I can actually play it. Yeah, which is that's that that's a, that's one of the things that hurts me about Duck Game for sure is that I want everybody to be able to play the game, but I completely understand that now more than ever, it's becoming less and less likely that someone's going to be able to get four people to play the game with because a lot of uh, interaction goes over the internet now. Uh, it's not like before where, well, even before, right? It was hard to get four people together. Oh, yeah. And it's just getting worse because it's easier and easier to communicate over the internet the same that you would in person. So it becomes less and less reason to make yourself open, like to be in a situation where you can get people over to play the game with. That's true. Because even when I was a kid, there were, I mean, we had a group of maybe 50 60 of us, but still couldn't get four people for one game. Yeah, because everyone's always doing their own stuff, and you never know, like, uh, it might not, like, the game's not for everyone, so it already cuts out a bunch of people. And then only so many people own the system, only so many people are even into, like, video games at all, right? Cool. And so it just narrows it down more and more, and yeah. that's why online, I think, is... Uh, is the best choice for something like that. And as much as people say, you know, online is less personal, was well, like, you know, but, <laughs> uh, you know, the world's getting a lot less personal in regards to just seeing people in person because 
the internet and you know i understand that and i think that uh, online is important for people who can't get local because it's not like uh you know it's not like people who aren't playing the game locally don't want to play it locally it's that they can't play it locally yeah that's like my situation now because i have like your game maybe one or two others where i make the purchase but waiting for the multiplayer to come out yeah so so i uh, definitely uh some sort of single player is planned i do want to add multiplayer and i think that it won't be a problem uh like i mean it's, I, I pretty much know it won't be a problem. It, it'll be in there by the end of the year, much before, like, sometime August, September, probably. All right, I guess at that time we can, I guess, call it the second launch because you're talking about <laughs> completely different set of rules there. I mean, yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, that is something... Something that uh, you could say with Duck Game is it's not something you're going to buy and it's going to stay the same and it's just going to be what it is. Like, it's completed. It's done. It, it's uh, got everything that I wanted it to have to be a solid all-around experience, right? But it's not done, like, in my mind. There's more things I want to do with it. There's weapons and items that I feel could be added without being repetitive. More things that would change the game in a way that it hasn't been changed yet. And of course, single player and multiplayer. So anybody who buys the game, keep in mind that I'm gonna keep adding things to it. I'm gonna keep changing it for the better. And uh, it's done now, but it'll be even more done as time goes on. Okay, so I guess it's safe to say you don't have like a secondary project going on right now. No, no, I've I've kept them all uh, I've kept them all off just to make sure that I can dedicate the rest of this year to Duck Game because I want to make sure that I get everything. I, I want to make sure that the game has everything that I could want it to have because instead of uh, you know as some people might release say Duck Game one and then Duck Game two. I would rather just get a following on Duck Game and develop it to the point where it's done everything that it can do without releasing a second version of it. Fair because I, and I feel like that, you know, if if you're unsure about your purchase, if you're worried about spending ten dollars on the game, you know, they'll they'll always be new stuff for you. It'll keep coming. I'm not gonna stop working on it and I'm not just gonna leave people to get sick of the game the way it is and then not play it anymore. There'll always be a reason to come back if you get tired of the game. Hmm. That's good to know because, um, as you know, a lot of games do get abandoned a little early or anything can happen. Oh, or even a secondary project and you forget about the first. Yeah, and that's, that's the main reason why I don't want to take my eyes off that game until it's where I want it to be, where I wouldn't touch it again, at least not for major implementation stuff. Okay. Um, you know, there was something I meant to ask you way back in the beginning. Um, how long have you actually been uh, programming? Oh, um, quite a while, actually. Uh, I started when I was a kid. Um, just simple stuff on, like, Commodore when I was, like, nine. And then, uh, like, I would just do those little text games where you could write a funny story, someone puts their name in, and then it makes fun of them throughout the story by using their name in place. Uh, and then from there, I got Game Maker when I was about 10, and I started messing around with the tutorials, making them my own, changing the sprites, changing the gameplay, and using the drag-and-drop system, which was the only thing, really, that I could understand at that time. I didn't actually get into the the actual text programming in Game Maker until I was around 12 or 13, at which point mm. I would just, you know, I would go to school, I would come home, and I would make stuff. And at school, I'd have a notebook with, like, graph paper, and I'd be drawing out levels and sprites for the thing. And then I would get home, and I'd add them. And pretty much all through high school, I just kept doing stuff like that. And then 
went to programming uh, art school after that, which mostly was just uh, time to learn what I wanted to do. And then, uh, let's see, that was about three to four years ago now. So I guess I'm 23 now, and I've been programming since I was around 12. So it's been, oh. I don't know, <laughs> I, I guess there was never any doubt in my mind about what I wanted to do with the rest of my life as far as games is concerned. Okay, well, that's a great answer. <laughs> um, well, I can't think of any other questions for you at this point. <laughs> uh, I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, is there anything you would like the audience to know at this point? Um... I guess uh, I, I just like to say to people that, uh, you know, if you're making stuff right now and sometimes you feel like it's maybe not the right thing or you'll never make something good or you're getting worse at making things even, like, you know, that's, I think as a creative person, you get all kinds of crazy, uh, you get your mind spun around about your own conceptions about yourself and the things that you're doing and well, for the most part, I think that's healthy and that's good. And the advice that I could give is, you know, keep making what you're making, even if it's crappy, because, like, Duck Game was pretty crappy at first. And even now, I'm not happy with the art because um, uh, I'm not much of an artist. I, I actually learned to do art over the course of Duck Game, and I always had doubt about it, but I kept doing it. And, you know, it's, I just want to say just keep making stuff, no matter what <laughs> wait a minute so you didn't do art before the game at all you were just basically learning on the fly i did some art before the game but it was really crappy sort of uh like uh functional art art where you could kind of tell what something was but it wasn't really nice ah, it wasn't okay. something somebody could look at and be like that looks good right like that's that's my favorite drawing of that that I've seen um, but yeah over Duck Game I learned to do pixel art pretty much entirely I hadn't done anything hmm. art wise that I was proud of before Duck Game and even Duck Game shows right you can tell that uh, there's a lot of things I think that signal that it was my first game that I've done art for but I'm a lot better now and I'll be a lot better at it next time so um, I wouldn't have thought it was like your first uh art project there because um i don't know if you've looked around there are some that uh don't look that good <laughs> on, <laughs> on all systems you have just some what do you i guess we'll call it developer art for lack of a better term yeah and you know i i made a lot of it like that too um i guess you know, I had a lot of time before I made Duck Game where I was making projects and not finishing projects endlessly. And I guess I had just built up sort of a lot of uh, a lot of potential ability for doing it by the time I decided to make something where I was going to sort of go out in public naked with my game, right? Like show people exactly what I was capable of uh, without any embarrassment. So... Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, Duck Game probably wouldn't look as good as it did if I didn't stress out so much about it, but <laughs> it's uh, it ended up looking okay because I was uh, I was pretty intent on making sure that it wasn't a completely ugly game. Well, between you and me, I can't do pixel art. Um, I use Unity. The asset store is my friend. <laughs> so... The asset store is a beautiful thing. It is. It's, uh, I've looked at it and thought, you know, uh, just the things I could make without worrying about art, if I could just have everything on this asset store all at once and just make whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, well, they made a good amount of money off me. <laughs> you will be seeing some of that stuff in my games because I, when it comes to 3D, I can't, for whatever reason, I could sit here and, like, I'm looking at you right now on the camera. I could draw you right now, but once 
I need it on the computer, I'm done. That's yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, so. and that's like, uh, and you know, I don't think like that's awesome that uh, like you know it, it. You should you should focus on the parts of the game that are important to you. And I used to use uh, like other art for all kinds of things. I would probably still use the asset store for certain projects. Uh, and really, like lots of people, you know, if you can't do art, even hire an artist because, you know, it's not for everyone. And the only reason I was able to figure out pixel art is because I spent a whole bunch of time figuring it out. Like uh, more, more time than most people really should have, right? Like I, I sort of, I think I'm not exactly a quick learner with stuff like that. So, well, but uh, it, it's a good looking game. I thank mean, you. It, you say you haven't been doing it very long. I've seen people who have been working on stuff longer and still can't even get to that. So yeah, and it's I think it all comes back to you know what's what's important to you, and a lot of people. That's not what's most important. Like, like I mean, look at uh, the Dwarf Fortress, right? Like, uh, that game's a little too complicated for me. I think a lot of people have said that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the guy is completely focused on gameplay. It's all he cares about. He wants it to be the best game ever. But it looks awful because, and he, you know, he would never argue that it looked good because he doesn't want it to look good. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's not that he doesn't want to, but, you know, he's got, he's only got so much time in this world. And he wants to focus on gameplay. And I think the gameplay is better because of that. So, you know, focus on what you think is most important in the game. And everything else is secondary. And plus, you can always go back to it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, uh, if Dwarf Fortress ever gets big enough that uh, that guy can hire a bunch of artists, right? Then they can work on it. And it would never have had to hurt the gameplay in pre-development. See, that, early. Yeah, for me, that's what I'm doing because I have the framework. Like I mentioned, the ten games. Um, some are at like fifty percent done. One is eighty percent done, but needs art. So, oh. <laughs> I mean, it's basically work on what you can, and then see. For me, I can't release that game. Technically, the game is done. I just need the art. Yeah, but, that's. For me, you can definitely. have you like looked too much around for uh, for somebody to do the art for it. I'm picky, so that's <laughs> another problem. Yeah, that's a lot of what inspires uh, sort of figuring out art. I think too is just pickiness. Like, uh, like, imagine there's a way in your head that you want it to look, but yeah. you can't get it there right now, and it's unlikely that anybody else is going to be able to get it there. So it's like sort of like in limbo. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. Because it's a possible 16-player game with online, so I need 16 models plus all the assets for the game. Oh, so, geez. Yeah. That's pretty big. So for me, I can't, I can't just put it out there, but I also need to figure out how to put it out there. Yeah. So, hey good thing that you actually were able to do that some of us um well there's an asset store <laughs> yeah, luckily my game though uh needed a minimal amount of art to start with and then was the sort of thing where you know i just need one duck sprite i need to animate it and then i can color it different colors and beyond that most of the art is new tile sets and new items and this is pretty manageable for one person yeah, because, I mean, for one person, you did great. And right now, you're the Ouya superstar, so not much more you can say after that. I mean, great job on the game. Everyone loves it. Hopefully, they still like you tomorrow. So. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. Well, thank you very much. This has been really cool. It's, the whole experience is, uh, is one of the best experiences of my life, for sure. Hey, it was great to watch, because I'm hoping that when it's my turn, I get even maybe half of what you got. <laughs> I, I hope so, too. I hope you do good. That's I hope you can find someone to get out for your game, or you can get something together, because... <laughs> yeah, that's... That's... yeah, that's going to be an issue. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, these things take work, though. I'm sure you'll figure something out. I hope so. Or I'm going to start with the paper, pencil, and try to get it just moving on the screen. Yeah, just start from, like, the very the very beginning, the very basics, and move it up. Yeah. It's, and, you know, you like you might surprise yourself, right? A lot of the art that I ended up doing, I started drawing it thinking, I can't draw that. And then I would just decide, you know, well, whatever. I'm going to spend, like, however many hours it takes, and I'm going to draw it. And, you know, sometimes I was surprised because I was able to draw something in a way that I was actually happy with putting it in the game hmm. that I never would have... If somebody asked me if I could have done that, I'd have been like, no, I don't know if I can draw that. <laughs> well, I'm, well, right now you have a whole community looking at you like, if he can do that, maybe we can too. And you can. Everybody can. It's just like... I don't know. You got to push, push, push. <laughs> and uh, try to try to ignore your brain when it's being all like, you can't do this. Because yeah. usually it's wrong. Well, that's easier said than done. But, it absolutely is. But, you know, sooner or later, I'm going to have to do that. And so will many others. But right now, I mean, hopefully this interview will be an inspiration to others because it's not like you're a guy who's had 20 games under your belt. You know? No, like I've been, I've been doing this for a while, but I haven't done anything really good until now. It's, it's taken this long, you know, and a lot of it I think is just getting past my own hurdles and my own boundaries and realizing that, you know, you only, you only got so long and you got to, sort of push if you want to get what you want out of the time that you have and it's not going to be easy it never is if you want to do quality work it's never easy well just want to thank you for the time and i'm sure everyone else thank you for taking the time to sit down have the interview um, thank you very much for having me it's been really cool i hope i don't sound like an idiot because i'm pretty good at that <laughs> Nah, you sound fine. Don't worry. I can edit. So, uh, <laughs> is there anything else you might want to let people know? Um, I think that's about it. Make stuff. Make stuff. If you want to make stuff, keep making stuff. Always make stuff. <laughs> okay, that might sound a little awkward, but we'll leave <laughs> that one in. All right. Well, that was Landon. Yeah, I'm not attempting it. That was Landon. <laughs> Creator of Duck Game, this is Kill Switch, and I'll see you next time.